Hi there, I'm Shivani. I'm an elite application engineer with Go Engineer, a SolidWorks reseller. We're going to take a look at the new simulation features in our FEA package in SolidWorks 2017. We'll end up using them as we analyze this battery pack. Let's take a closer look at the model. We're testing the door of the battery pack. There are tabs on the outside of this door that need to be squeezed in for the door to fully release. We need to make sure that if someone is opening this case with a little too much excitement, that the door won't break. So looking at the part file on its own, we cut it in half to take advantage of symmetry and hold it in place along the outside face. This is the face that juts up against the outer case and we're making the assumption it's not going to move much because of that. Then, we push the tabs in using prescribed displacement. 2.3 millimeters is only 0.3 millimeters more than required, or about 10 thousandths of an inch for most of us Americans. Okay, that doesn't actually sound like very much distance, but linear static simulation thinks it is and it's going to pop up with this large displacement question when I run the analysis. Now imagine this. I've started this simulation before I left for a great lunch with my coworkers. Well, it's probably just salad. But I get back from my really energizing lunch to find that my calculation got nowhere because this message popped up five minutes in and has been sitting there since. Well, in 2017, that is never going to be a problem again. I can choose for pop-up messages like this to time out, and SolidWorks will make an educated guess, which will of course be logged for us to look at later, allowing us to at least have some sort of answer when we get back. The stress ball on my desk thanks you, SolidWorks. The stress on this part, though, is less happy. There is a very large region of gray. Is this real stress or an FEA singularity? Earlier, I used to find the answer to this by rerunning the simulation with finer meshes and monitoring the maximum stress. Today, I use a stress hotspots graph. Without doing any work on my end, SolidWorks tells me where stress is diverging to infinity. ABS plastic yields approximately around 45 megapascals. Ignoring my stress singularity, did my tab yield? Well, let's see. I'll just quickly come over to the legend and reset this. Yep, definitely way above 45. Colors on the part make it look like it didn't yield much, however. Let's fix that. We can make the max 45 and then everything above that. Let's go with pink. And by the way, that quick draw color was new to 2017. What mavericks. More importantly, I've got a bit of yield in my corners. Can I trust this and say my design is okay? No, for two reasons. Since this is a linear static analysis, all material data above yield is assumed. Only in a SolidWorks nonlinear analysis can I draw from the curvy part of the stress strain curve? So I guess I'm off to create a new nonlinear analysis. Or not. Nowadays, I could just copy and convert this original. So little work, so much time. What to do with it all? Well, let's be honest. I'll probably spend that extra time napping on my desk as the nonlinear study runs to completion. Come on, little laptop, you can do it. Which solver do you like the most again? I guess Intel, that's the fast one these days, right? Wait, two Intels, Intel network. Do we have parallel computing power? Finally, I am very excited about this. A direct sparse solution solves all the displacement equations between nodes by inverting a very large stiffness matrix. Usually we've been limited by RAM and how large this matrix can be before we're forced to go out of core. Plus, whenever we get above 50,000 degrees of freedom in a nonlinear study, the time to solve begins to really stack up. Parallel CPUs have been known to decrease this by 50 to 60 percent, 
and now we have even more parallel CPUs to work with. In 2017, with Intel network sparse, solve times are going to drastically decrease. Once we have our results, we can compare them. 2017 added two new buttons to the compare tool. One forces the views to be the same on both parts, making direct comparisons easier. The other takes a quick pick for posterity. We can take the analysis one step further by testing the door in the context of the assembly. This way we can also include the retainer bracket while still excluding everything else for speed. Before, this would hide all the components and I could not see if the deformed result interfered with anything. Now, we can check that here or in the main model. This way, I can also create high quality rendered images that also include my simulation results. I hope the features like automatic closing of pop-ups and network solving can really help speed up your workflow in SOLIDWORKS 2017. Thanks guys for tuning in to see the new simulation enhancements and please check out some of our other What's New videos here at Go Engineer.